Please talk to him right now. Emergency. I'm so scared. I'm scared. <laughs> we got a house. Woohoo! You have to take a cautious step. So we only did a one month agreement initially mm -hmm. with Jennifer. Find the best lawyer that you can. We did not know this, and uh, we had to suffer for it. There is in Canada something called vacancy tax. Hi, kinds. Welcome back to our channel. Be kind. This is me, Kriti, and that's my husband, Shrey. Thank you so much for all your support throughout our house buying process. And those of you who have been watching our videos and our series of our house buying process know that we have been looking for a property for us to buy in Canada. And those of you who are new to our channel, we would like to welcome you to our channel. And we want to announce that we are sitting in our own house. This is a very good feeling. So we finally are homeowners in Canada. And we made very detailed four videos about us looking at various properties on how did we set our criteria, what type of houses, condos and, and detached homes did we look at. So if you have not watched that series, we will link it right now. And in case you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. We see that so many of you have shared your love on those videos, but about only 20% have subscribed. So if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please do that. It will be a big boost to us. In the next three videos, we will talk about our journey of finally purchasing a condo right after we liked the property, what happened till the time we moved in. So we will share information which will be really, really valuable for us if you are ever going to go through this journey. And our house buying process was not easy. We had a small hiccup in between. Our closing date was delayed due to some unforeseen issues that we weren't aware of. And there are not many videos about this topic. So we were completely clueless and we didn't know who to reach out to or what to do about it. So I we really hope th these series of videos help you out in such scenarios if that happens with you and to reveal like we purchased a condo in Etobicoke and we looked at this condo in our video 4 and I'm linking the timestamp of the video where you can find this house and you will also get details like the listing price so basically it's a two bedroom condo in Etobicoke and we'll link the video so that you can see all the details there and we'll do a house tour also very yeah. soon so yeah. even before we start let me share with you who are some of the important agents that are really important in this entire home buying process so we are the buyers okay on the other side there will be a seller so in India buyer and seller often interact with each other but in Canada they never interact with each other both buyers and sellers have agents who represent them and they talk on their behalf so the two most important agents that will become our friends are your realtor and your mortgage agent and there are three things that you require even before you start this process yeah so the three things you need before you even start looking for houses is your realtor your pre-approval and your savings these are important things ne you need to know when you're starting this journey of buying a house in Canada so let me now talk about having a realtor because the realtor is your best friend in this whole process they become your face to the seller and their lawyer so it's very very important that you have the best one in the market so we luckily found a really good realtor her name is Jennifer we found her through a referral through through Shrey's friend and she helped us out in getting us our rental apartment there as well so when you are working with a realtor especially when you are buying there needs to be an agreement that is done between you and your realtor and your realtor then represents you in all of the transactions for the term of the agreement so generally realtors will want that agreement to be a long-term agreement so that you know it kind of safeguarding their interest but as a buyer you have to take a cautious step so we only did a one month agreement initially with Jennifer because we wanted to see how she is in terms of showing our houses whether she is giving us the appropriate time and guidance luckily we found a house in that one month period itself but you can determine what period to choose when you are signing your realtor so that's step number one the second step that you need for sure and that's what Jennifer also asked us on the first call is to get a pre-approval. A pre-approval is kind of like a mortgage eligibility that you will have from the big banks that you know you are approved for a mortgage mm -hmm. up to this limit. So they will look at your documentation, your salary slips and everything and give you an approval till X amount. 
So basically, then you can be in the market looking for houses below that amount for which you already have a pre-approval. Because getting a mortgage, especially in these days of higher interest rate, is a challenge. So ensure that you have a pre-approval so that, you know, this issue does not come up after you like a house. So you should definitely know your limits. And the third important thing is to have your savings sorted out for first down payment and obviously for closing. We have been saving, you know, since we landed in Canada, we had some savings before that from India also you need to know what's your budget you need to know how much you have saved up to pay that down payment and also you have to calculate whether the mortgage that you will be paying it should not be 50 to 60 percent of your house income that is coming in there is generally a rule of 35 which means only 35 percent of your net take-home income which is after taxes you should be paying towards your mortgage so do your calculation accordingly like here the banks they may approve you for a higher amount but it's not necessary that you need to get a house of your entire limit so we could have also taken a much bigger house but we chose this house so that we would be comfortable in paying the down payment now let us show you what happens when you are putting an offer after you have liked a house in canada so we'll take you back to the time I think this was back in September, September, end of September, end of September 23, uh, when we did this whole process. So we recorded it so that we can showcase real emotions. So you would see that in that video. Flashback. Hi guys, we are just reviewing the offer that we are going to make on our first ever property that we want to buy in Canada. And how are you feeling? I feel like a grown up, uh, but I'm a little nervous too. But I'm very excited as well. So it's a mixture of feelings that I'm feeling. So it's been a lot of hard work after office hours. We just look at properties and we went around the entire weekend. We were just looking at different houses. But right now we have that offer and yeah, I'm excited. But yeah, it's a big step. We are adulting and growing up. How are you feeling? I feel the market is also right. Like it's earlier in the year, it was more of a seller's market Mm -hmm. where there were multiple bids Mm -hmm. and everything was going over. So I think now is the right time. Maybe we are little too soon towards the bottom. But I think still we are getting a lot of good houses in the price range that we want. And every day more listings are coming up so i think we are in the market at the right time the interest rates are really high but that's something where we have made the calculations and ensured that we are staying within budget all the lawyers and just kind of say uh listen i I got an offer accepted can you please review the status certificate in the offer i put three business days but she will very she might scratch that and make it less Okay. Uh, I don't know what she's going to do, but I put three, two is standard and usually I put even three just to give my buyers more leeway. We'll sign it and send it across to you. A few moments later. So guys, we just got uh, a counter offer and we had put a very reasonable offer, I would say. So this is, this is not bad. Like this is much better than what we were expecting and she has the uh, the person has given us only two hours to accept or reject or whatever and yeah. it's 9 12 p.m right now and she gave us time till 11 p.m so I, our parents are also not up i've not even told my parents i'm so nervous yeah so like if we accept then this becomes real like we have a house in canada and we have to fulfill the offer like we can't back out so we haven't spoken to our bank secondly we haven't spoken to our building our lease goes up till end of january (laughs) the closing date that we have put here is 15th of december so that's about one and a half months that we will have to figure out and we haven't spoken to our parents my parents don't even know that we are seeing this house we haven't spoken to any of our friends that uh, we like the unit we just saw it today we started looking for houses yesterday and i'm just shocked yeah, right i now. think we did a lot of pre-work before we going. did a lot of work yeah like even with our realtor we spoke for like i think two weeks on which i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> scared <laughs> what should okay, we do i think we'll we'll call uh, my yeah, father talk to your dad yeah. Please talk to him right now. Emergency. <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello, Papa. Namaste. Hello, Papa. Hello, Namaste. Good morning. Good morning. We help you. No, no, no. 
कैसा लगा मम्मा आपको कैसा लगा बहुत अच्छा देख लो अपना जय माता जय माता दी डू यू वॉन्ट टू फिनिश साइनिंग टूगेदर ओके वन टू थ्री गो थैंक्स फॉर द ऑटोग्राफ We got a house. Woohoo! My God, 25 year commitment. So basically, what was happening in the video was once you like a house, your realtor sends an offer letter to the seller's realtor, and in that offer letter, there are three important things that you have to put. One is your cost, which is basically the cost that you will pay for the house. The second thing that you have to tell in that offer letter is what will be the closing date. so you have to choose a date on which you will be closing and after that the mortgage will start and you will get the possession of the house and the third thing that you have to tell in that offer letter are conditions so we will come to that in this video it was a crazy time for us because when we saw this house uh, our realtor informed us that there, there are more viewers coming in and since we were very new in this journey uh, and we got a positive vibe from this house we went ahead and decided let's put an offer and see If it doesn't work out, it will be a learning curve for us, and we will learn what actually happens when you put an offer. So we weren't sure we will get this house. So you would have seen in that video once it got accepted, and we were like shocked that what what happened, and we yeah. were completely clueless that oh this really happened. So and we had seen a lot of stories of people's offers getting rejected. Yeah. That was a different time in the market, but this was the first offer that we ever sent out. So we were like, okay, even if it doesn't get accepted. It's okay. There is yeah. a long journey ahead of us. Yeah. It, we have just started the process, but it got accepted, and then I was like, okay, you know, we are yeah. we're a little shocked. Okay, now we had all the calculations in Excel, but it suddenly became a reality. Yeah, yeah, and I, then we just went with it, and I think it was meant to be. So I think things happen at the right time when they are meant for you. So I think that was meant for us then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's talk about what are the details of the offer letter. So as I said, you have to put a price uh, which can be lower than the listing price. Also, our price was lower than the listing price because we also know that the market was slightly favoring the buyers. But it depends on when you are watching the video. If it's a seller's market or it, like it was back in twenty one or twenty two, where Uh, no offer was being put for less than listing price and there were multiple bids happening mm -hmm. so thankfully it wasn't the case for us but it could be a scenario depending on when you are watching the video yeah. so the first thing is the offer price the second thing that you have to put as closing date so we were already living in a rental unit we had a lease uh, which was till january so we decided the date of 15th of december as the closing date and the last thing that you have to put are conditions putting these conditions kind of safeguards your interest as a buyer which means that if any of these conditions are not met you can walk away from the deal without losing any of the deposit so that is why these conditions are really important so the first condition we put was the financing that a bank is ready to give us the mortgage to pay off the loan the second one is a review of your status certificate you need to involve a lawyer in this process now and the lawyer would review the status certificate a status cert certificate is something that since this was a condo it came through the management of the condo which talks about certain rules certain regulations of the condo things like when it was Build. What are certain things we need to be aware of? It will also have details about when the maintenance price can go up in the forthcoming uh, years. If they have any big renovation coming up for the building, so you can anticipate that you know because they are doing the roofing or maybe uh, updating the gym, the cost of maintenance could go up. And also, what has been their history? If there are any lawsuits on the building, so you can get all those information. from the status review and the last thing is your inspection so usually when people purchase a stand alone house they get these inspections done we didn't go for this because uh, usually condos are really well maintained but it depends on your case if you're buying a stand alone house or a town house or a newly constructed house there are certain things you need to inspect so finally our offer got accepted with those two conditions that we just discussed and after all this is done you get 24 hours to make the first down payment of your house usually this depends on what you decide between you and your realtor so we came to a final cost with our realtor and then we made that down payment within 24 hours 
after you have made that down payment you have to you know the second condition we put in was a status review now uh, we were looking for multiple lawyers for this because the lawyer will review that status and you know there are other things involved in as well when you're closing down the house so like your realtor having a great lawyer is very very important because the lawyer will help you finally close the house uh, while the realtor starts the process the lawyer actually closes it find the best lawyer that you can we did not know this that how important is a lawyer and uh, we had to suffer for it we had to we did suffer for it which we'll talk about in the coming up videos of this series but yeah it was a very stressful time so make sure you select the best lawyer to close your house after selecting the lawyer we got our status review done i think we put in two three amendments that got clarified with the seller and our realtor and that took some time once that happened our uh, second condition which was the status review was waived off from the offer and we have made the down payment also and we also on the status review while we did not do an inspection we reached out to the management to check if there was any renovation work done in the unit in the last 3 years so we checked that with the management because we did not do an inspection that was kind of like a pseudo check that we did yeah. and the second thing that we also checked because this unit was vacant there is in canada something called vacancy tax which means that if your unit is vacant for the full year or there is some criteria to it there will have to be some tax paid to the government on behalf of that so we asked the seller to ensure that will if any taxes will be payable that it will be their responsibility so these were some of the amendments that we did on the status review and on the financing we worked with a mortgage agent we provided all the documents to a mortgage agent which was suggested by a realtor and here you need a, some somebody who can work really fast because you only have 2 to 3 business days mm -hmm. to submit all the documents to the bank and because we were also taking cmhc insurance we will talk about more of this in the next video but because of cmhc insurance we were paying less than 20% down payment so additional documents come into play and because also we were less than one year in canada so we will talk more about it in the next video but after you get all the approval of financing done you have to then waive off the first condition which is financing and that is when the offer becomes firm so by having a firm offer it means that now you can't back off from that offer now you have to have to close so that's when things actually become real when you waive off all the conditions and if you have any questions in this process for us please mention it in the comments or reach out to us on our instagram we will put the handle down below so that we can address your queries to the best of our knowledge now we are also not experts in this field but we will we can share from our experience while all this sounds complicated there are other things that were awaiting us in that process so we will walk you through those complications and things we learned from this through in the next video i hope this video was helpful for you and you can utilize this to understand what happens when you like a house and how can you buy a house in canada and thank you so much for all your support if you have not subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel it will mean a lot to us and this is us signing off in our part 1 series of our home buying process thank mm -hmm. you bye bye